Witam Was kochani. Mam nadzieję, że będziecie mogli oglądać. Wiem, że jesteście w pracy. Raczej większa e, liczba ludzi jest teraz w pracy, więc e, godzinę mieliśmy tylko i wyłącznie taką do wyboru, więc, e, więc pooglądacie sobie ewentualnie później, e, jak, jak wrócicie z pracy, albo oczywiście będzie też e, dostępna ta rozmowa na, na YouTube. Także nie wiem, ile osób będzie na... Dzień dobry, dzień dobry. Nie wiem, ile osób będzie, słuchajcie, na żywo, a ile osób będzie mogło dopiero, e, dopiero później zobaczyć. Ja się włączyłam troszeczkę wcześniej, bo po prostu chciałam, żebyście dołączyli i żebyśmy od razu mogli zacząć rozmowę, jak tylko doktor Czafe się włączy, ponieważ e, pytań jest naprawdę sporo. Nie wiem, słuchajcie, czy w ogóle uda mi się zadać wszystkie pytania, bo naprawdę miałam już wcześniej sama pytań, bardzo dużo do doktora, a jeszcze Wasze starałam się uwzględnić, więc, więc jeżeli mi się uda, to oczywiście zadam te pytania, a jeżeli mi się nie uda, to może po prostu później zadamy te pytania, które na przykład podczas rozmowy nie padną, albo może będzie kolejny live, zobaczymy. Także na razie, na razie czekamy, aż się doktor włączy. Mam nadzieję, że on się sam dołączy do rozmowy, a jeżeli się nie dołączy, to ja go zaraz zaproszę. No i 13.1 jest to, wyślę. Zaproszenie. Wyślę zaproszenie i... i zobaczymy, czy się doktor włączy. Mam nadzieję, że się włączy. Także kochani, pytania mam. Eee, wszystkie mam zapisane i pytania są naprawdę bardzo ciekawe i nie da się na takie pytania odpowiedzieć w ciągu, wiecie, kilku, kilku sekund, a nawet czasami minut, a też nie chciałabym jakoś mega poganiać czy, czy lecieć w tej rozmowie, więc na razie jeszcze nie widzę doktora, mam nadzieję, że, że się włączy, że nic nie pomyliłam, nie, no nic nie pomyliłam, godzina jest ok, także... Pytania, które, które zadawaliście pod postem, ja już miałam wcześniej dość dużo z tego zakresu tutaj wypisane. Miałam też inne pytania, które są, uważam, ważne dla każdego. A czemu nie może dołączyć? O! Już jest doktor i nie wiem, dlaczego nie może dołączyć. Jeszcze raz go zaprosiłam. Ja nie wiem, co tu się dzieje, ale po prostu jeszcze raz wysłałam zaproszenie. Mam nadzieję, że teraz się uda, bo dostałam tutaj informację taką, że nie może dołączyć. O! Hi! Hello! Hello. Hey. <laughs> nice to meet you! Oh, sorry about that. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. So, to... do you do you have a good uh, internet connection? Because now the the. Słuchajcie, napiszcie, czy wy coś widzicie i wy słyszycie, bo u mnie jest totalnie. Totalnie się zawiesił obraz. Can you hear me? I think that something is wrong with the internet connection. O, myślę, że e, jeszcze raz, jeszcze raz, słuchajcie, trzeba to połączyć, bo niestety, ale... Coś chyba, coś chyba jest tam z internetem. Ale poczekamy, słuchajcie, no tego nie przewidziałam, że nie będzie... E, że nie będzie doktora, nie będzie połączenia, ale słuchajcie, mam nadzieję, że, że zaraz, to, zaraz to u doktora się wyjaśni, bo ja mam bardzo dobry internet. So, a, yeah, I, I can, I can, he, I can see it. Uh, I did invite you uh, once again, so could you please accept my invitation? 
coś tam jest z ym, połączeniem. Jeszcze raz zaprosiłam. Może teraz się uda. Nie może coś doktor dołączyć, słuchajcie. Ja jeszcze raz go zaproszę. Um, nie przewidziałam takich... Yy... O! Okej. Okay. I can't see you. O, oh, okej. Okay. Now, it's, now it's better. Sorry about that. I was trying to connect my microphone to it and then it cut out for some reason. Okay, okay, but do you have a good uh, internet connection? I do, because I, I tried to use um, a microphone. And it ah, just okay, didn't work. okay. Ah, uh, so sorry. No, it's okay. Thank you that you, you find the time to, to meet me because I would like to speak to you about carnivore diet and about your... Um, uh your I, I i'm a, a little bit nervous so <laughs> uh, here in poland it's 1 p uh, 1 p.m so mostly people are at work but mm. they can see uh our conversation after work or i will put it into my youtube channel so uh i introduced already uh but could you please tell us something about you? I know we, we know that you are a doctor and you are uh, uh, on carnivore, but could you please tell us something more about you? Uh, yeah, well, so uh, definitely say, doctor, thank um, you, carnivore. I've, I've been a um, carnivore most of the time. And, could, and, I don't know if, uh, because I can't hear you properly. Oh, ah, okay. Um, Oh, now it's better. Hear? Maybe, maybe you should be a little bit uh, closer to to the telephone. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm a um, doctor, as you say, and uh, on, uh, been doing carnivore for a very long time, and I've uh, just played sports since I was a kid, and really interested in nutrition and fitness, and so that's what got me interested in that in the first place, and also being um uh interested in medicine and biology that was always very important to me and so it's just been nice to be able to use that to help help my patients and help other people uh take control of their health so they don't need doctors in the first place so for, for how long uh, are you on uh, carnivore uh, i started 22 years ago um when i was about 20 years old and i did that for about five years straight but i i, I wasn't I didn't know how significant what I was doing was. Uh, I just knew that there were a lot of toxins in plants. And because I studied botany, I studied biology, I studied cancer biology, and I, I learned how awful these things were to our bodies. So I sort of slipped, slipped away from it um, after that because I didn't didn't really realize what I was doing was, was so significant. I just felt really good, and I, I, I had an aversion to plants, but everybody was saying plants are good, plants are good, plants are good. And I just thought, well, is it that big of a deal? And so I sort of slipped off of it. But I was still mostly eating meat. I ate very little um, carbohydrates or vegetables, uh, certainly hardly any fruit. And then about five, six years ago, I sort of rediscovered this. But basically from a, from a standpoint of just uh, biology of humans being carnivore, that's that what all the evidence shows. That that's the kind of animal that we are biologically. And everything sort of made sense then. I'm looking, looking back, I realized that I felt absolutely amazing when I was only eating meat and not eating anything else. And then when I sort of slipped off that, even though I was almost exclusively eating meat, but maybe some like breaded chicken, and, and that was it. And, and that, that was enough to really, really change how I felt. And that was the difference. And so I started looking at that from a doctor, a medical perspective as well, as a doctor, and thinking about things in, in the way that you know, humans are an animal and the kind of animal we are is a carnivore, and that we're, we have a specific biologically appropriate diet. 
And then we go outside of that and we can get very sick, just like all animals will get sick if they don't eat their natural diet. This is why there are signs at parks and at zoos that say don't feed the animals because they'll get sick if they eat something that they're not supposed to. We're animals as well. And we get sick if we eat something we're not supposed to. And so when I started looking at medicine that way, things started making a lot of sense and they started falling into place. All of these diseases and illnesses that we say, well, we don't really know why it happened, but here's some medicine. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it. Oh, actually, that's from eating the wrong thing. And you're getting this harmful substance in your body and it's causing harm. And so that's, that's been uh, sort of a revelation I've had in the last few years. Okay, but when we, but, but uh, how did you eat as a child? I mean, did your parents know about the diet and uh, did you have a good, uh, you know, you, you also been on carnivore or uh, what happened before your 20s? Uh, yeah, so um, I, uh, I, my whole life was very meat based. I only wanted to eat meat when I was a kid. And so I was, I was that classic child that you had to fight to get me to eat my vegetables. I hated them. I didn't even like fruit. I really didn't like fruit. It was just like, I ate it because I guess it was, it was kind of sweet and all right, I guess, if I had to. But I actually didn't really enjoy them. Um, yeah, maybe strawberries and that I like. But most of the time, I, I didn't like fruit. I just wanted to eat meat. And I ate the other things because I had to eat the other things. And, and what about sweets? Sweets? Uh, probably candy and things like that, you know, like a sugar cereal, you know, yeah, I would like that. Um, but not, not even sweet fruit. I wasn't really a big fan. Some, some fruits I like, like low plot. My grandmother had a low plot tree. I really liked those. But, but most things it was just, yeah, it was okay. But, uh, I wasn't, I didn't really care. But sweets, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, any kid's gonna like sweets. I mean, like Halloween, I would just, you know, eat myself sick. But, um, uh, but we, we, that was one thing my parents really, uh were good about they really didn't have a lot of sugar sugar treats in the house they were really um careful about that so sometimes we get sugar in the house but very rarely Uh, but i always always liked it that was was my favorite but uh, did you made uh make a decision about to switch to carnivore because you had some symptoms or you feel uh, not good or it was just because uh, you studied how we should uh uh eat and uh, it was uh, that's that's why yeah that, no that's exactly it i just i just studied and learned how ah okay so all... you didn't have any symptoms and health problems no I, was, i actually felt great i was actually playing high level rugby i was an all-american rugby player I was playing in the canadian premiership playing the top leagues in america and uh, and, and going to university playing the university team at the same time and i, you know, I felt great But, you know, I, I learned this, that these things were very harmful, very toxic. And I said, okay, yeah, I don't, want, I don't want to put anything like that in my body. And since I stopped doing that, I felt even better, even better, even better, as compared to myself as a, as a high-level athlete. And so it was, um, you know, it was, it was purely because I wanted to do the, the best thing for my body and my health and my athletic performance. So, so could you please tell us what do you eat now? I mean, how many meals do you uh, prefer any kind of meat? And uh, do you eat uh, also diary? Because I know that some uh, people on carnivore doesn't want to eat diary. Some even add uh, some honey. Yeah, I, I generally eat beef. Beef is my favorite. That's what I feel. Uh, that's what I feel best on, and uh, and very fatty. So I'll have very fatty cuts of beef, like, um, you know, ribeye or scotch filet or uh, New York, and with the fat on. And that's what I feel the best on. I'll eat other things as well. Like, sometimes I'll have pork or lamb or egg, but I always feel the best on beef. And so that's what I try to eat. Usually I eat one big meal a day. I, I eat, you know, a lot of steak until I'm full, and I don't feel like... And then I'm usually good for about 24 hours. You know, if you're eating high density nutrition, then you don't need to you don't need to eat as much or as often. And so I do that. If I'm working out a lot and my exercise level is, is very high, I'll probably be hungry twice a day. So I'll I'll eat you know, sometimes double the amount uh, if I'm working out a lot. And I don't really care. I don't care on dairy. I know how to never. 
did you uh, did you or do you still uh, check maybe uh, ketone levels or sugar levels or you didn't? I've, I've never checked any of that stuff. Um, just because I, you know, I, I trust in, in the sort of the big picture. I'm more of a, I'm more of a big picture sort of person. Um, you can get very lost in the details. Details can be very interesting, and I like the details. But I think the, the big picture is the main thing. The big picture to me is that humans are carnivores. We evolved as carnivores biologically. We're carnivores, and this is the way we are supposed to eat. And so, if you eat that way, and you don't eat anything else, then your body's going to work in the way that it's designed to work. So I trust my body to work that way. Every now and then I'll get some blood tests done because other people are interested in it and they, they come back very, very good. Um, you know, which, which I, you know, was sure that they would just because I, you know, I, I, you know, I think that the evidence is very strong that this is how we're supposed to eat. So, well, I'm, I'm sure my ketones are up. My blood sugar is always low because my, my HbA1c is quite low. And so I have checked that, and so I know that, and um, you know, and I feel great all the time. And so, um, but I don't, I don't like micromanage my ketones. I don't have, you know, like you know, check things several times a day. I just let, I let my body do its thing, and that's. Uh, and if you're, if you're healthy, you can do that. Like if you have epilepsy, or you have, uh, or, or if you're treating cancer, or something like that, then, then sure, you know, it's important to make sure your ketones are up and okay. make sure your blood. That that was actually my next question. Uh, uh, if you recommend this kind of measurings to people uh, who are on maybe in the situation like cancer, like uh, epilepsy, so uh, in your opinion, it's beneficial to do this if you have some kind of uh, health problems. Yeah, well, yes, especially I think it's I think it's good for everyone to do this just because it's um, you know optimal. But it um, it uh, it makes a big impact for people that are unwell because of the food that we're eating. Because a lot of these diseases that we're treating, like diabetes, like heart disease, and even most cancers, are a product of eating the wrong thing. I mean, the reason I stopped eating plants in the first place was because I was taking cancer biology, and we learned that there was dozens, if not hundreds, of carcinogens in all of the vegetables that we eat on a regular basis, like Brussels sprouts, mushrooms spinach, kale, broccoli, lettuce, all, all the rest of them. And, and they're quite abundant. There's more pesticide toxins in plants naturally than the pesticides we spray on them industrially. And that they're far more harmful than the pesticides we spray on them industrially. Think about this. The plant is making natural pesticides to stop animals and insects from eating them. And we're spraying it on there more just to get rid of the rest of them that, that can eat those things. So there's already toxins in the plant. And so... But uh, I would like to ask about it, actually. I don't know. I, I can imagine that uh, the situation is similar as in Poland, uh, in United States or in Australia, because here is like that, that everybody thinks that uh, vegetables and fruits are the most important uh, food for us, the most nutrition. And uh, even if you see, you know, the... Uh, television or or even the media or any anything like that they push to for to for us to eat uh, a lot of fruits and vegetables and uh, for for my my audience it's also very important to understand i think why it's not as much good choice as we uh, are supposed to think about it you know because uh, I think that people uh, scared about to uh, it's they're scared about uh, uh, not eating fruits and vegetables, you know, because it's everywhere. Well, that's, that's very understandable and it's very reasonable because we've been told for fifty or sixty years that these are very very healthy for us and they're very important for us to eat. However. Uh, there's a lot of things that people have gotten wrong before. And, you know, doctors used to tell people that smoking and drinking alcohol was actually good for you and, and that you should do this, okay? So that's, uh, you know, just one of the things that we got wrong. And I think this is another one. The main reason that this poem that you said that fruits and vegetables were good or grains as well uh, actually had a lot to do with industry. There were a lot of, uh, you know, food organizations and lobbyists that, that 
tried to push through and say, hey, if you want to promote our product, you have to help us. It's good for the country because this, this will be supporting farm workers and farm jobs. And so the things like the food pyramid and, and recommendations that we eat our grains and cereals, those came through. There's also weird things like, like uh, Kellogg's, uh, Dr. Kellogg's, Kellogg's cereal. He was a Seventh-day Adventist. He was the Seventh-day Adventist um, tried to push veganism and vegetarianism yes. because people that ate meat became much more, I would say, virulent. They would say, uh, you know, uh, uh, virile, and they would say lustful. And they said lust is a, is a one of the seven deadly sins that makes this bad behavior. So obviously, meat is bad because it makes you want to procreate, and that's and that's a bad thing. And so they were pushing eating no meat in order to suppress your natural urges to uh, reproduce. And so that that was why Kellogg cereal came through. That's why actually he recommended uh, and, and got it recommended by the government that young boys get circumcised in America because they say, well, this is this is better for them medically. But in fact, it was because it would make them more it would make it more difficult for them to masturbate. And that bothered him. And so like for some reason this guy just had just really wanted to be in everyone else's business. And so that's where a lot of these things come from. But but people don't realize that's where they came from and they've just been around for so long people just think that's what you're supposed to do. Also it comes from the fact that the US uh, government, the USDA said that fat and cholesterol cause heart disease. And so instantly meat became bad, egg became bad because they have fat and cholesterol. And that was a lie. Yeah. Journal of the American Medical Association published in 2015, actual internal memos from the sugar companies back in the 60s, detailing how they paid off three Harvard professors to falsify data and publish fraudulent studies to make it appear as if cholesterol was causing heart disease when it was really sugar. And that to say that sugar was safe. And one of those professors was named head of the USDA, um, and it was he who authored and published the 1977 declaration that said, you, you know, cholesterol caused heart disease. We know this is fraud. It's a matter of record. This was published in one of the most prestigious medical journals in the world, and it was his own memo. This isn't a suggestion. This isn't an accusation. This isn't a study. This is hard facts. This is a history. And so that's where that came from. Because they said that meat was bad, fat was bad, cholesterol was bad, instantly everything with fat and cholesterol became bad, but things without fat and cholesterol became good, and things that could lower cholesterol became good. And so that's where fruit and vegetables came in. They didn't have fat and cholesterol, therefore they were good. And because the fiber and the unsat polyunsaturated fats would reduce your cholesterol, therefore they were good. But that's actually wrong, because the heart disease rate has tripled since we made those recommendations. And people started eating less animal fat and more plants, and fruits and vegetables. So what is it? You know, we reduced our fat intake and reduced our red meat intake by 33%. And we've increased fruits and vegetables by 30 and 40%. And yet the heart disease rate has tripled. You can't say that cholesterol causes heart disease, saturated fat causes heart disease if you reduce them both and heart disease triples. If anything, you could say it's, it's protective. And in fact, that's what all the big studies show in the last year. Um, there are actually uh, studies by um, the Journal of the American College of Cardiology that they published in 2020 saying point blank, there is no problem with saturated fat. Saturated fat is not even associated with heart disease. Um, and so you can eat as much as you want. That, that's from the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. And the same authors from that study were some of the authors on the previous studies and recommendations saying, oh, don't eat saturated fat cholesterol. Basically, them saying, like, we got this wrong. We're sorry. And so they, they've come out with this big uh, uh, study since then. Yeah, I would like to see this study, uh, really, because I don't know if the same situation is uh, in your country, but here it's like that, that you have to, you should have to study for everything. And mostly that veganism is good and mostly for that uh, meat is bad. So we can find this kind of uh, research, that kind of study everywhere. And this one about that meat is really good for us, about this, this cholesterol, it's not bad. It's, it's really difficult to find it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, it, it, um, it, it's there if you want to look for it. I did a video on YouTube called... Uh, the, the hard facts about cholesterol and heart disease. And in that, I go through all of these, these studies.
studies in detail and about you know a dozen more and talk about them specifically and what they found and how they found no association, no relationship between saturated fat cholesterol and heart disease. In fact, they found protective uh, uh, in, uh, association. So the more cholesterol, the more saturated fat, the less heart disease, the less stroke, the less Alzheimer's, the less Parkinson's, the less autism. Most of them have higher levels of, of cholesterol when pregnant and, and eat more saturated fat, have lower rates of, of autism. Vegan vegetarians have higher rates of kids with autism. And, and they're actually causative studies that show that because it, it, they, they lose out on certain nutrients like carnitine that we use to develop our brain. And if you don't develop your brain properly, then you'll have problems. One of those problems can be autism for the, in, in the genetically susceptible. And so it's a problem. And could you tell us, explain uh, about this cholesterol? Because I have a lot of questions about uh, the level of cholesterol, which is uh, which is okay, because people uh, who are or car carnivore or even on keto ketogenic diet, they start to uh, think about the level of cholesterol, and they uh, they are afraid of it that it's too high. So, could you tell us what is really high, high level? Yeah. So uh, the thing is, is that the the idea of, of cholesterol being too high is it stems from those those fraudulent studies and papers that we now know to be bought and paid for industry propaganda, really. And so, uh, and in my in that video that I talked about, that I uh, talked about cholesterol, I have all the links for all the different studies in the description, so people can go look at the original sources themselves and see if they uh, think I got it wrong, but I didn't. Um, Cholesterol is good for you. Cholesterol is what your body is made of. Every cell in your body is made out of cholesterol. Every cell membrane is cholesterol. Uh, your hormones, most, almost all of your hormones are made out of cholesterol. Certainly all your sex hormones. So for testosterone, progesterone, progesterone estrogen, um, your mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids, like, like cortisol and things like that. All of these, everything made in your adrenals above your kidneys, all of those are made out of cholesterol. Vitamin D is made out of cholesterol. There are 27 steps between cholesterol and testosterone. Every one of those steps in between is a hormone that has uh, has a biological function in your body. Every single one is derived from uh, cholesterol. So this is a very, very important molecule. Um, it's so important that your body makes it. You have to have it. It's not you're, it's not compatible with life if you don't have it. And then the, the issue with the low density lipoprotein carriers of cholesterol is not they, they themselves. It's when they get damaged. And when you're eating carbohydrates, when you're eating sugar, when you're drinking alcohol, when you're, you're using seed oil and, um, and polyunsaturated fats, like, you know, high amounts of linoleic acid damage these, uh, LDL cholesterol, turn them into small dense lipoproteins, that's the LDL. And those damaged lipoproteins cannot be recognized and taken up by the liver. The only thing that can take them up are your macrophages. So these scavenger receptors on your macrophages are the only things that can bring these things up because you have a, you have a, a receptor on these things called Apple B100. When that's damaged, it can never, it cannot be recognized and used normally. And so your body then has only one mechanism of clearing it, which is, is macrophages. And they form up in these giant foam cells. And, you know, then, then we have other issues. There's also, problems with atherosclerosis and that we see clotting. We see like the 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 um the remnants of clots and blood clots mm -hmm. in the cell and or sorry in the in the lung of the um, artery and these things going in there trying to heal and things like that. Um so it's 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 not very well understood how it causes heart disease. However, it's mostly to do with, with damage and derangement of your biochemical processes driven by things, doing things and putting things in your body that aren't supposed to be there, like alcohol, like cigarettes, like carbohydrates, like seed oil, like sugar. All of these things damage your body and damage your mechanical, your biochemical workings in your body and they, and they precipitate out as uh, serious diseases. I would like to ask you, because you are a doctor, and to, do you recommend the, the carnivore diet to your patient? Is it possible in your practice, in your everyday life? Because I think that uh, in Poland, for example, in, in the hospital, if you uh, recommend the, the carnivore diet, you're going to be in jail. <laughs> well, 
Well, there are a lot of people in in uh, the U.S. and Australia that have come under fire for doing this. Um, but I'm, you know, I, I'm, I generally get along pretty well with people, and you know, with, with the dietitian, and nutritionist, and things like that. They know exactly how I feel, and <laughs> because we've had these conversations. And you know, when when I talk to them about these things, a lot of them, you know, look at and go like, "Wow, I, you know, actually, you know, that makes a lot of sense," and they actually start looking into it. So I, I get a lot of people on my side, and um, you know, it, it's sort of it's not always in the scope of my practice in the hospital to to dive in nutrition. I think it helps everyone, and I think it's appropriate in a lot of cases, but it, not always. And um, you know, sometimes you're just dealing with an acute issue, and and you know, that that is what it is. I have, uh, but I do try to bring this up when it's, when it's relevant, and I think it's going to particularly help someone. It takes a long time to talk about this with people because it's a very new idea to a lot of people, and so it, uh, it takes time, and, and so that's something that, that you don't always have uh, in a busy day at the hospital, but I, I do my best to try and educate people and at least give them, provide them resources that they can look into more if they want to. Uh, I have a, a practice outside of the hospital in functional medicine and metabolic health, where we absolutely incorporate diet and nutrition. That, that's one of our mainstays of our practice is getting people to change their, their diet, diet, dietary habits and their lifestyle in order to better their health. Because that, that's, that's the basis of health is, is what you eat and, and what you yes. do with your And do you, um, could you tell us about your patients, for example, what kind of symptoms uh, or health problems uh, you, you saw that uh, Carnival had? Because, uh, because uh, I think that my audience would like to know and, and uh, they asked me many questions about, you know, I have, for example, uh, some problems with... Uh, my heart disease or I have uh, a kidney stones or I have uh, I, I don't have a gallbladder or uh, I have cancer I have uh, a kid with autism and you know and they think uh, is it possible me with this kind of problems uh, be on carnivore because I think that people are uh, afraid of this diet Yeah, so, yeah, well, look, it's, it's, it's totally understandable to be afraid of it because we, we've been telling people to be afraid of it for a very long time. But when people look into it, things really start making sense and they start understanding that they've been misled and they've been lied to. And for especially things like autoimmune diseases, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, things like that, this is, this is a very, 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 very good diet because it, it eliminates out a lot of things that cause a lot of harm slow down your metabolism, make it difficult for your body to fight things off, but also precipitate these diseases. You know, I, I think that the so-called chronic diseases that we face nowadays, like heart disease, like diabetes, like autoimmune diseases, and even most cancers, if not all cancers, are, are not diseases per se. They're actually, a, you know, um, they're actually, you know, toxicities and malnutrition. Toxic buildup of a species inappropriate diet and a lack of species specific nutrition. So too many plants, not enough meat. And so when you get off of that and you go back to what what, what I consider our, our natural, proper human diet, as uh, Dr. Ken Berry says, uh, then your body starts working normally and you start working things out of your system. You know, if you had lead poisoning, if you had lead pipes in your house and you started getting lead poisoning, the answer for that is not taking medication and, and continuing on drinking out of Pipe. The answer is you get rid of the lead pipe and you stop the exposure to the poison. And that's what's happening right now. We are being poisoned by the food we eat and the, and the, and the drinks that we drink. And that is what is, is the problem with, our, uh, with the state of our health and around the world right now. Yeah. And so if you, if you just get rid of those things, your body can heal actually quite a lot of things. I just uh, actually just did a presentation on cancer and, uh, and, um, Uh, ketogenic metabolic therapy because it uh, it really makes a big difference. Cancer cells because they they don't have very good mitochondria. Their mitochondria damage is a, is a hallmark of all cancers uh, that we know of. All of the mitochondria are damaged. They don't work properly. And mitochondria are what make the energy in your cell, which you have to have, or else the cell will die. You will die. So the the cancer cells are very bad at because of their damaged mitochondria. So they actually use. 400 times the amount of glucose, blood sugar, to 
that the rest of our, our, our cells use. And so if you limit the amount of glucose available, then you are going to limit the amount of energy that are, is available for these cells and won't be able to grow. Simple mm -hmm. as that. And we've shown this in animal models and human models that when you limit the amount of, of food available for these cancer cells, they, they wither away or at least slow down and your body can help fight them up and you can use other things as well to, to also fight them. Um, and so your body will be able to run on ketones, which is actually most, a lot of your tissues, like your heart and your brain, you're, you're, they prefer to run on ketones. And your cancer cells cannot run on ketones because of those damaged mitochondria. They don't have that ability anymore. And so you're fine. You don't have any problems because you're running on ketones. There's a bit of glucose there as well um, because you can't, you're not going to get rid of all of it. But the cancer cells are going to be extremely limited and they won't be able to run on, on ketones. This actually really, really helps in cancer patients. Uh, there's, been, there's been tons of studies. I'm actually starting a study at my, uh, at my hospital for our brain cancer patients. We gave a whole big lecture at our grand rounds and showed the evidence and said, hey, why don't we do this ourselves in the department of research? So, uh, we're, I'm looking into that now into, into design study or joining another uh, study and making like a multi-center approach in order to study further with, with human uh, subjects. It's great. It's great. I would like to uh, join it. I mean, uh, you know, see this and to show to everyone that it's uh, proven because I think sometimes that uh, people rather uh, prefer to drink alcohol or eat some sweets uh, than eat meat because it's not politi political, you know, uh, accepted that you eat steak. And here you have, for example, a, a big cake, which is really colorful and beautiful and it's better for them to pick this uh, uh, cake up not to pick the steak because it's not good for you it's uh, very uh, you know unhealthy and it's not uh, uh, approved you know by by everyone so i think it's that's that's people that's why people are afraid of it and doesn't want to It's okay because uh, my battery, I don't know what's going on with the telephone. I had a full battery and now it's, it's uh, okay. Uh, I would like to ask you about um, the symptoms because sometimes when we uh, eat, for example, you know, normal, normal diet, I mean, a lot of sweets or even if we eat, uh, for example, uh, fruits, vegetable and some uh, meat, should we... Uh, switch to carnivore just like that or we should avoid some uh, some uh, food and after that uh, start to eat only meat and for example uh, eggs diary or something like that should we uh... um mo most people can just get into it um you know it, it um there are some you know, possible issues that people can have, you know, if they're, if they're, you know, I, I think there's some theoretical, you know, people talk about, you know, if you're, if you've got biome, it's, it's completely geared up to just eat meat or just eat plants and things like that. You haven't been eating a, a lot of meat, maybe, you know, transitioning over and give your, your biome a chance to uh, sort of transition. However, you can also just eat dairy, like live, uh, live culture yogurt, just natural yogurt that, that puts very, very healthy bacteria in your gut that will, um, on a carnivore diet, um, so you can do that. Um, some people, if they came from like a, it, it's it's a bit funny because there there are people. Um, that I, I'm sure people have heard of uh, like oxalate and oxalate dumping. I, I just spoke with Sally Norton and um, who she, who's an expert in this, and she went into great detail about it and and showed people can have actually very serious. serious um, consequences of stopping too fast because your body has actually sequestered a lot of, of oxalates and that's just sort of dumps it out, dumps it out, dumps it out, and that can cause problems. And, um, but at the same time, I've seen people that have been vegan for 10, 15 years, and then they've been carnivore for years and years and years, and they, they haven't had that problem. So I think it's individual, but most people are just fine. We're just going straight into an all meat diet. It's um, it's uh, it's something that 
when you're when you're trying to quit something, you're trying to change habits. Sometimes it could be easier for people to just stop what they were doing, <laughs> and that slowly transitioning over. Sometimes that's difficult for them logistically. Just like when people are quitting smoking, if they just oh well, I'll just kind of cut down and I'll cut down and eventually I'll stop. They they never stop. Yeah. Eventually they just go like okay, this isn't working, and they just then they just throw all their cigarettes away and they stop. And that's when people have the most success. And so I find that when people you know, think about this and like, this is what I need to do. I need to just get away from this. And they do it. They throw all the food out. They just buy a bunch of meat and they, they say, that's, that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Then, um, then that's what uh, works the best. And then they say, well, I'll just, I'll just finish off what's in my fridge, you know, and then, you know, and then I'll, I'll uh, go. Just cut. Yeah. yeah. So just cut it out. Just throw everything out. Just get rid of it. Someone else you know, who doesn't mind being poisoned and, uh, and just buy me and just get going. That's what I think anyway. I know that I asked you about some, some, uh, uh health problems, uh, but I would like to ask about, uh, acidification of the body because meat is very acidic. I mean, acidic and, uh, the people with, uh, high uric acid or gold kidney problems, should they, really change their diet for carnivore because they are really afraid of it. I know that it's not true, but I would like you as a doctor explain how is it looks like. So, so the thing is, is that meat is, is not acidic. You know, there, it's, it's not, I mean, if it was acidic, it would, it would sort of taste funny on your tongue. You know, we, we put that in our mouth. There is no reaction. There's no, uh, you know, caustic effect. If it was acidic, it would be caustic. Um, Plants can be very acidic, you know. I mean, like when you look at like the vitamin C, there's citric acid, and obviously like, citric acid. There's, there's a reason it's called acid. It's acidic, and um, and even oxalates they turn into oxalic acid in your body, which is terrible stuff. It strips minerals away from anything. You if you have like rust on something, you you, you make a solution of oxalic acid it's diluted to oxalic acid. You put it on there, it just you know, rust just comes off because it binds to that iron and just rips it off. Um, that's doing that in your body as well. That's binding to the iron in your body and calcium and magnesium in your body, making them not available to you. So it's 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 a bit of a slur to say that meat is acidic and that's bad for you. It's not true. Um, either way, your body does just fine. Um, you know, modulating and uh, uh, and regulating its own uh, pH level. Like if your pH goes, it is very tightly regulated. If the, if your serum blood pH goes outside of the range of 7.35 and 7.45, you get very, very, very sick. So people say like, oh, well, it was slightly, you know, basic. So we need to eat all this basic stuff. Like that's not why our blood is slightly basic. Our blood is slightly basic because our body makes it that way. Not because we've eaten a carrot and that, and that you know, changes everything for us. You know, you can fight against yourself. You can eat things that, you know, take up, you take up like a lot of uh, antacids and things like that. You can go into like, you know, actual, you know, uh, metabolic uh, alosis where you become too basic and it actually, it actually really hurts you. And so that's, uh, that's a bit silly. The, the, um, the other thing is that there's nothing in meat that actually causes harm to people. This is meat. We are made out of meat. What is in our bodies that are is damaging to our bodies inherent? That makes no sense. You know, we, 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 you know, there's, there's no like actual chemicals and things like that that are in our bodies that are going to destroy our bodies. That, that, that makes no sense. But there are hundreds, not thousands of chemicals in plants that will harm you. you know, most plants will kill you. They'll just kill you dead. You know, you go a lot, you get out in the woods, you get lost. You can't eat any random plant. Most of them will kill you. And so, you know, we, we understand this intuitively, and yet we, we forget that when it comes to carrots and broccoli and spinach. But carrots and broccoli and spinach all have defense mechanisms as well. It's just that we have more uh, ability to break down those poisons safely than other poisons like hemlock, which you eat half a leaf of, he of water hemlock, you're dead. It blocks the GABA receptors in your brain irreversibly, you will die of intractable seizures within minutes. So the idea that that meat is just inherently bad for you doesn't make 
sense just from a basic principle point of view. And in fact, it's wrong. But uh, do you know that people, I think, mostly afraid of uh, nutrition? I mean, uh, they think that they can get nutrition from fruits, from vegetables, and uh, from plants, mostly. And they are afraid that in meat, they, are, they don't have enough nutrition. So if they switch to meat diet, how can they get, uh, you know, vitamins, minerals, and uh, they always ask how, um, how, many, uh, how, uh, how many supplements do I need if I'm on carnivore, you know, and w what kind of supplement do I need because I'm on carnivore, so I don't have enough nutrition because I don't eat vegetables, fruits, and so on. Yeah. So, so the thing is, is that you actually get everything that you need in the proportion that you need it from meat. And you know, fifty-six percent of animal species in the world are carnivores and from meat. So, if you're if you're designed biologically to get all that you need from something, then then that's all you need. Um, the, we we think of things uh, in in respect to the recommended daily allowances. We're told you need this much of this vitamin, this much of this nutrient, this much of this mineral. Um, but those were calculated at the time when everyone was eating a fixed diet. Depending on what you eat, you need a different proportion of, uh, of nutrients. And so when you're eating carbohydrates, you need vitamin C measured in milligrams. Whereas when you're not eating carbohydrates, you need vitamin C measured in nanograms, which is a one million times difference. So there's plenty of vitamin C in meat. There's more than you need. And what does vitamin C do? Vitamin C has different, you know, reactions in your body. But we think of it as, you know, from, from staving off scurvy, helping us make collagen. But when you're eating meat and you're eating collagen, you get all, all that that you need. You don't need the vitamin C to make collagen. There's already those precursors available to you. So you actually need much, 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 much less. And so the thing is, again, we are made out of meat. So what is by definition going to have everything we need to build and maintain meat, you know, more meat. There are animals, you know, we call herbivores, they, they have a very intricate digestive tract where they can break down plant bodies and turn them into animal bodies. That's very difficult. Not, not many animals can do that as a proportion of species out there. So we're one of them. Um, Carnivores, again, 56% of all animal species are carnivores. That's because they don't have the ability to, to really do that very well, and they don't have the same as plants as, as other herbivores do. And so we and they have to eat the animals that have already done the hard work for us and turn the plant material into meat. Um, when you talk about um, when you talk about nutrients and say, well, what supplement? Think about how many supplements vegans and vegetarians have to take. Think about how many supplements normal people take. A lot of vitamins, they take a lot of nutrients, they take a lot of uh, normal. Uh, I was speaking to a, a vegan um, nutritionist, or she was getting her PhD in, in nutritional sciences. And we were going back and forth, you know, uh, study for study, point for point. And finally, how I convinced her uh, that, that uh, she was on the wrong side of this was when she said, well, how, what, what supplements do you take? And it's it, Come through me. I said, I, I don't take supplements. And she said, Well, of course you take supplements. Everyone has, has to take supplements. What supplements do you take? And I said, And it dawned on me, like, no, no, you don't have to take supplements. In fact, you're not supposed to take supplements. If you need to take supplements, then by definition, your diet is deficient. And so if you're eating your natural diet, it's not going to be deficient. No animal in the wild takes supplements, including human animals. And they're just eating meat. And so, in fact, it's the vegetarians and omnivores that have to take a lot of vitamins and minerals just to get basic nutrition. But I don't, and, and other carnivores don't either. So you actually get everything that you need from me. Yeah, that's, that's true. I think that it is a real huge market of supplements, you know. And uh, I know that in some cases when uh, people are really, really... Uh, have a big problems with their health. They they need some supplements maybe for a while. But uh, I I had a Lyme disease and uh, MS for many years, and I couldn't find you know the proper uh, 
way to to get healthy and i was also the vegetarian for for seven years so uh and i'm actually i, I didn't like meat you know really when i was a child i didn't eat a lot of meat because i didn't like it so i think that my problems started in my childhood and a lot of antibiotics a lot of uh, medications and so on so uh i would like to ask you one more question about um because some some people will start to have a uh, huge constipation uh, when they start uh, carnivore so could you tell us what we can do what uh, should we just wait or should we add any for example ox bile i don't know uh yes yeah, so generally uh constipation comes from not enough fat and so that's something that that people you know quite commonly do because you actually need to eat a lot of fat. You've actually, your body actually wants a lot of fat. Probably 70 to 80% of your calories should come from fat. And that's what we found to be pretty much the, the range in nature of animals, even carnivores and herbivores. Carnivores, because they eat animals with fat and they go for the fat first. But also herbivores, because that's actually what they break down fiber into. They don't absorb, they eat fiber, which is carbs, but they don't absorb carbs because you can't actually break, no vertebrate animal can break down cellulose. So it's actually the bacteria in their gut that eat the cellulose. And then as a waste product, they secrete short chain fatty acids, which are 100% saturated, by the way. And then those bacteria die off and they break down into protein. So the animals actually absorb fat and protein. And most of that is fat. And so when you're not getting enough fat, I find that that's when people get constipated. The reason being is because your body can only absorb a certain amount of fat. Your body makes bile, and bile allows you to absorb fat. And so when you run out of bile, then you can't absorb fat. And so any extra fat will go out of your system and go into your weight. And that is what keeps your stool soft. And so in fact, even taking box, box bile will actually make you more complicated because you, you'll really not, not uh, get rid of any excess fat. The other side is true as well. If you eat a lot more fat than your body can absorb, you'll get loose stool. And so some people actually get diarrhea when they mm -hmm. go carnivore. So well, that's because they're eating a lot more fat than their body is capable of absorbing. And so they just need to back a bit. Or they're still drinking coffee and using artificial sweeteners, both of which uh, are, are laxatives. They're natural laxatives. And so that can actually hide constipation. So sometimes people don't eat enough fat but because they're drinking coffee, it ends up being normal. And so that's just something to think about. But if you're only eating meat and only drinking water mm -hmm. and you're constipated, then you need to eat more fat until you're not constipated. And constipated is, um, we have to define our terms because constipated doesn't mean not go to the bathroom. It's five hard animals that are, are you know, pain. That's constipated. But when you're eating, absorb not the meat that you eat, and so you're not going to have as much weight. When you eat fiber, fiber, it all has to go out, and so that's going to have a lot more bulk. When you're eating carnivore, you're not going to have nearly as much bulk. You may only go to the bathroom once or twice a week, and it may not even be that much. You think, "Oh my God, I'm constipated! I'm constipated! I'm constipated. Are you blue? Are you in pain?" But if it comes out five, then you. Okay, sir, I just have to put my. Because my battery is very low, so. Sorry. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for that. Um, uh, I would like to ask about um, uh, parasites. You know? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have the same. Uh, idea in in australia but in poland we have some kind of uh, i don't know how to say maybe that uh, we we would like to kill everything i mean you know parasites bacteria and virus uh, viruses so we put a lot of things to do this you know so if we uh, go to the doctor we we hear, hear that we have parasites and we have to just kill it yeah so we have to take antibiotics or uh, if it's a naturopath we can take some herbs or we can take some supplements to kill it so could you explain what do you think about parasites and uh, what we have to do 
But I think that uh, we've gone a little overboard with that. You can get parasitic infections that cause serious harm. And those, are, uh, you know, those need to be treated. But just avoiding them at all costs can be problematic as well because we have big parts of our immune system that are just geared up to fighting off parasites. And it's thought that, and this is the same part of our immune system that gives us allergies. And so it's thought that when we have no exposure to parasites at all, growing up and then later, that our body just looking for something to attack, and then we start attacking things that aren't actually a, uh, a problem. And some people that have very, very serious debilitating allergies that actually will expose themselves to parasites like roundworms, allergies just go away completely. And so it's, it's probably more nuanced. Uh, if you have a, an actual bacteria, or sorry, an actual parasite, and and your body's not clearing it and it's causing harm. Yes, that's medication. I wouldn't I wouldn't just do it anyway. And I, I, I I'm not as you know when I'm at the hospital and I'm I'm very very clean. Wash my hands and uh, that's that's different. But when I'm outside and I'm not so meticulous, you know, with my um, washing all the time and not getting it wrong, anything like that. It's normal to be exposed to. People natural to be exposed to things. And if you're not being exposed to viruses or bacteria or parasites, your your immune system is going to be a bit weakened. And when you are exposed, it can actually hurt you quite a lot. This is why if you get exposed in a flu season every year, maybe you get maybe mildly sick every year. But then if a new strain like the, the swine flu came in, it's an animal animal population enough that it was very different when it came back out. People didn't really have the uh, cross immunity. But they're very sick. Um, when you go to a different country and they have different flu strains or cold strains, you'll get much more sick than the people will. Uh, I haven't been sick in years. One of the only times I've been sick, you know, because you know, when you're on carnivore, you just don't get sick as much. Whatever. Before I was on carnivore, I would get sick once a month. I'd get a cold or something like that. I was, it was bad. And I'd, I'd get pneumonia twice a year, you know, recognized on x ray, on x ray. And uh, it would be bad. I'd have to be taking antibiotics. I, I don't get any of that anymore. But when I came to Australia from America, you know, I, I wouldn't get sick in America because I was exposed to all the strains. And so even if they changed, they only changed a little bit. So I had cross community. I came to Australia and I ran into one of their flus. And I like people that were very sick. I got actually a lot sicker than they did. You know, I normally don't get sick. So my immune system is much better. But because I hit, into a, a flu strain that my body was not prepared for, you know, I, I got hit full in the face flu season. So it's it's important to be exposed to these things. It's important to have a robust health immune system. And I think that goes for parasites as well. But if you have an active uh, parasitic infection that your body's not clearing, then absolutely take medication. Mm. I think that people mostly think that uh, the meat is a problem, and uh, the meat. I I can uh, I uh, I have some problem with uh, uh, hearing you. Uh, did you do something? Because I can see that people also uh, oh. uh, say something about your microphone. I think. Well, I haven't changed anything. I can I can oh, get closer was, again. Oh, now it's now it's better. Uh, I said okay. that uh, I said that uh, people uh, are afraid of uh, meat because of parasites. They, but they, uh, what do you think about uh, vegetables? Uh, do they have uh, uh, parasites as well, or how is it looks well, like? Yeah. Well, yeah. the thing is too is that when when you're looking at the parasites in food, uh, there really are no parasites in, in the meat that we we eat commercially now. Maybe. Um, you know, wild meat, wild game that you've hunted, sure, they'll probably have some parasites there. But that, you know, cooking gets rid of that. And that's why you know, you cook something, it will, it will kill the parasites in that. But again, you know, animals, other animals in the wild, and have their system set up to deal with the parasites. But parasites are nasty little things, and they can they can they can evade a lot of um, a lot of defenses. But cooking helps, and that's why you would normally cook uh, game meat sort of. Uh, you cook it through. Um, farmed meat is, at least in America, there is, there is no parasite in America. So even in, in pigs, they say you have to cook pig pork well done uh, because there's parasites like trichinosis. 
However, there, there hasn't been a single documented case of chicken uptick in farm and the pig stock in, in America in, in over 20 years. I think it's like 25 years now. Mm -hmm. So that's 98.5% of the poisoning cases in America come from produce, often like lettuce and things. You, you, you can't get, there's all these little cracks and crevices in there. You, you can't get all the bacteria and, and worm eggs and things like that in there. So you're going to have parasites in, um, in the dirt and in the soil, and that can get on the, on the vegetables, and that can get in. And so, uh, yeah, and you're much more, you're much more those things like parasites from uh, vegetable bacteria from vegetables than with the meat. Okay, I, I have some question from one of my followers. And uh, and um, for myself, I would like to also know the, the answer. Do, because uh, you mentioned about uh, autism. Do you have... Um, uh, yes, it's still muffed the microphone. So I don't know. Maybe you have um, something with telephone. I don't know. But uh, uh, did you uh, say something about autism? And I would like to know if you have any research or study or your your own experience about uh, the kids with autism that uh, this kind of diet because i'm all, i'm a gaps coach and natasha campbell mcbride i don't know if you know her but uh, she's very successful with this kind of diet with uh, uh, kids with autism but i would like to know your your experience well i, I do know that there are that use a ketogenic diet to help kids with autism and they have very, very good results. I know a number of people come and told me that their own children um, who have autism, some would say they are, are non-verbal autistic only when they're eating carbohydrate. When they don't have carbohydrate, that they, 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 their brains work better. Um, I think that there's a, there, there can be a number of reasons for that. I don't all fully understood but like i said before our brains practically run on ketones people think that, that glucose it is not glucose the brain, when your body gets up to a certain point of ketones it doesn't matter how much glucose you have your body will switch over to ketones. and um and your brain always runs on ketones whether you're in a fed state a fasting state any state it doesn't matter your brain's always running on ketones and when it has enough ketones it almost only runs on ketones preferentially in any case and um you know that that's something that uh my professor ben dickman of byu does a lot of research in this he's shown quite well people can look at his stuff um there was a there but i mentioned also that vegans and vegetarians have higher rates of, of autism kids with autism there was actually a study from uh university of texas and um, that uh showed causation uh, as not correlation not at all there's a higher but they showed an actual cause of autism, of one kind of autism, autism spectrum disorder, the spectrum of symptoms. I think that that means that there's a spectrum of causes. And one of those causes, and they're genetically susceptible, is from a lack of carnitine. So we make carnitine normally it has a non essential amino acid, meaning that we make enough of it, but not everyone does. Not everyone uh, makes it at all. Normally, this wouldn't have been seen as a problem in the population because there's carnitine in basically all animal food, you know, meat and, uh, and dairy, uh, but there's none in plants or fungus. And you need it from meat. And most um, people eat meat. And, um, but there's a ton of it in red meat as well. That's where the most carnitine is in, is in red meat. And so when you have a vegetarian that you know, is stopping eating what do they eat? What do they stop first? They stop eating red meat first because that's the worst, right? That's the best. So if their kids don't make hardly any carnitine, then even the small amounts of carnitine they're getting from chicken, fish, and, and dairy aren't going to be enough. And their brains aren't going to grow properly because you have to have carnitine for the proper development of the neuron. You need other things as well, but this is one of the things. And then you have vegans who, who don't eat any product whatsoever and they don't have they don't have any quarantine coming in. If their kids don't make, you know, even slightly enough, then they get uh, they'll get this kind of autism as well. So 
So there are strong links, but also cost of as well. I think that something is still wrong with your microphone because people ask us to yeah. check it. Uh, I have, uh, I have one, maybe one or two more questions. Uh, so actually, some, some, people, uh, so, some people ask me about, um, uh, about their kids, actually, you know, because it's really difficult if you have, for example, a teenager, uh, at home and it's really difficult to check what he or she is going to eat at school I mean with uh, with friends and so on you know and uh, I'm curious if um, uh, beside that that kid is going to eat pizza or ice cream or any sweets it's really worth it to keep carnivore at home or it's not good to combine this kind of two diets. I mean, you know, a lot of sugar, a lot of uh, glucose and uh, junk food. And at home, we, we, we try to keep carnivore with meat and fat. What do you think about it? Well, I think that, um, does it sound better at all? I'll try to use the mic. Please keep going and I will tell you because sometimes it's, it's good. And uh, in, in, a, in the middle of the sentence, it's like a collapse and I can't hear anything. Ah, okay. So, um, no, I think, I think that it's very important to keep kids properly at home. If they're going to eat other things that are bad for them, well, at least they're getting good food when they're home. Um, and then it also reinforces the eating habit um, as well. So it, it, it's hard to do this when kids are sort of teenagers or hot grown and, uh, and they're sort of rebellious and they think, well, I don't want to do that. Um, but this comes from educating them and teaching them like you would anything else. Hey, look, this, this, is, this is something that's going to be better for you to do. This will make you healthier. This will make you grow bigger and stronger and uh, smarter and more athletic. I can appeal to people on that end as well. Um, but no, it's like if, if, it's like if um, you know, if you're doing one bad habit, you know, it's, it's better to do a bit of that and then do healthy things otherwise. You drink on the weekend and you say, well, I drink on the weekend, so I might as well just drink every day since I drink on the weekends. Well, no, obviously, there's more. And so it's, uh, it's uh, very important to establish healthy eating behaviors and habits at home. And uh, if you fill them up on good, healthy food, there's they're not going to be as interested in, in poor quality food uh, when they go out. You can't necessarily stop cooking the going, but you can kind of educate them and teach them so that they don't go out and do, do the wrong thing. Just like, you know, we try to teach our kids not to go out and drink or smoke or do that sort of things. You know, we try to teach them uh, healthy eating habits as well. So don't just give up on because, you know, the schools feed them. And there's a lot of schools that do that, you know, they'll start they uh, are actually pushed veganism and plant-based meals so they're, they're something that are, are purely vegan and they won't let you spend meat school with your kid. They actually take the food away and send the kid home. Uh, it, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. You just have to do what you, you can do um, try to educate them so that they make the decisions when you're not there that are appropriate. Yeah, we, we have the same in Poland that uh, many kids, uh, even in the preschools, they are vegan. So I can, I can see it in Poland as well. And uh, I would like to ask uh, about histamine because uh, many people have a problem, has a problem with histamine. Uh, and uh, do you think that uh, it can be helpful to switch to uh, um, carnivore and uh, it's going to be better? Well, so it, when people are having a histamine reaction, so this is like an allergic reaction, or our bodies use, our system uses histamine to actually fight parasites. And then sometimes we'll get allergic to something and our body will inappropriately release histamines, which will cause uh, different problems in our body. And I have definitely found that my own allergies personally have improved significantly. My asthma has basically gone away uh, since going carnivore. And a lot of people noticed that as well. And so there's something going on. I don't know exactly, but I don't have as as severe histamine responses. Um, 
than uh, as I used to. And there are a lot of people that have, have helped their serious seasonal allergies uh, by going carnivore as well. You know, at the end of the day, this is what we're supposed to eat. Our bodies are going to work much more optimally. And we're going to have different environmental exposures. And we can't help all of that. However, uh, when, our, when we give our body the best nutrition, then our body's going to work as well as it can, and it can weather those environmental problems a lot better, including allergies. Okay, thank you. And uh, as a surgeon, do you think, because uh, one more question about uh, venous, I don't know if it's good my spelling, venous changes. Uh, I think that uh, you have on your legs uh, vernicos vein, something like that. Is it good? Yeah, so some, someone is asking about, uh, is it possible to reverse it with carnivore diet? Or if it's really, you know, big, it's not possible, you have to just uh, do an operation. Yeah, I, I, I've never seen it one way or the other, going backwards on carnivore. Once you develop varicose vein, then you know, that's sort of an anatomical variant that's, um, that's a problem. And I, it would be interesting. I, I haven't spoken to anyone who specifically worked their varicose vein with that. But a lot of problems that people have with varicose vein with surgery is surgery because maybe they're unsightly, but also because they're uncomfortable and they're painful. The painful part, you can definitely have carnivore because it reduces inflammation and your pain response. And so you find things that normally hurt you a lot more much or don't hurt you at all. And, you know, could it could it be that it sort of uh, changes things around and, and those vessels freak out a bit? Maybe, but I haven't seen that directly myself. Okay. So the, the, the inflammation, anyway, inflammation is less, but uh, it's not, uh, you you can't uh, see this, this kind of uh, uh, problem. So it's not possible to tell if it's uh, possible to to clear yeah. it uh, yeah i i know yeah. Uh, I, uh, I have a lot of questions but i think that uh, this time uh, we are enough and also this this problem with your microphone it's uh, i think it's big for for people and for me as well because i can hear for example, three words, uh, okay, and after it's collapsed, so so uh, something is definitely not uh, not good. But anyway, I would like to thank you very much because I understood everything. So I'm going to explain to, uh, if it's needed. Uh, I'm going to put the video on my YouTube channel so they can uh, check uh, when they're going back at, uh, from work. <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much for your time and uh, I'm also on Carnivore and I'm really happy to be on it and uh, it's really helpful also for, for my disease and uh, I couldn't walk for many years and now I, I'm maybe not healthy uh, in 100% but it helps me uh, a lot because I couldn't uh, go to the bathroom even so it's really it's really great to have this kind of uh, diet. Well, that's great. I'm really happy for you. That's, that's awesome. Okay, so thank you very much once again, and I hope to see you again anyway. Yeah, well, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure to come on again. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.